relay races are the only team events in track and field athletics. They're looked upon by many spectators as the most exciting part of the program. Teams of four athletes getting the baton, usually around the 4 by 400 meters or 4 by 100 meters in the shortest possible time. Getting it all together requires a great deal of practice, but clearly nothing matters more than sheer sprinting speed. And generally, the best sprinters win the relay races. So relay runners must be the best sprinters available, but that's not enough. In addition, they must train so that they can change that baton safely from one runner to the next when both runners are moving at their maximum speed. And that needs practice and precision timing. Even those skills which look simple can become complicated and confused in the hurly-burly of competition. Simply passing the baton in this non-visual way requires a great deal of practice at speeds which can be built up gradually using a variety of training drills. Pairs, fours, or even sixes can work together at both passing and receiving the baton. Such practice means that any man can run in any position in the team. Here, a four-man squad trains together. The rear man passes the baton to the man in front of him and sprints to take up a new position at the front of the squad. The maneuver is repeated as they jog around the track, each man giving and receiving in turn. The receiving hand goes back on the verbal command of the man with the baton, a simple and effective drill which helps build up confidence within the squad. Now to analyze the changeover. There are two possible techniques. In Britain, we have adopted the up sweep pass. In this, the receiving hand is thrust back with a wide V between thumb and forefinger. The baton is passed with the two hands touching, leaving a long end of the baton free to be passed on for the next exchange. There should be the greatest gap possible between the runners, and both men should be moving at top speed at the moment of exchange. There must be no pause in either sprinter's action. When the downsweep technique is used, the outgoing runner offers his hand as a flat platform, and the incoming runner passes the baton down onto it. Again, the longest possible length of baton is left free for the next exchange. In the 4 by 100 meters, the outgoing runner trains by running from a crouch start to give consistency to his first strides. This is the only part of the exchange which is visual, as he watches for the incoming runner to hit the practice check mark. Working on check marks is the most critical part of all relay training. The outgoing runner must sprint with confidence to reach optimum speed for the moment of changeover, and that exchange must take place within the 20 meter relay box. Two coaches are really needed to supervise this drill properly. Exact check marks can only be worked out in practice for individual athletes. As a rough guide, they are placed about 30 foot lengths for men and 25 for women, measured from the back line of the accelerating zone. Once a check mark position has been established that fits the speeds of the incoming and outgoing runners, it is necessary to find a pattern for the movement of the receiving hand. Usually, the hand should go back on the sixth or seventh stride. Alternatively, the movement can begin on the command hand, called by the incoming runner. Though in the hurly-burly of a race, this can be difficult to hear. The first man in the team will normally use starting blocks. The starting rules are the same as for sprinting. The fingers must be behind the line and the baton must not touch the ground. 
the first runner always carries the baton in his right hand. And so that no runner has to change the baton from one hand to the other whilst running, the second man receives it with the opposite hand, the left, and so on throughout the team. This also ensures that the bend runners, numbers one and three, can hug the inside of their lane and not have to move out to make the pass. In training, the incoming runner can reach his maximum speed in 40 to 50 meters, but occasionally the runners must train over the full distance to get used to running flat out and exchanging the baton under competition conditions. Practice may be the key to success, but it is not a mechanical operation. The sixth stride might not coincide with the arrival of the baton. It may be the seventh or eighth, but sprinting speed must not be lost. When it comes to the heat of competition, there may be several teams shouting hand at approximately the same time. This is where discipline counts, where the confidence that has been built up through practice is tested. But even the top international squads find that with all the practice in the world, it doesn't always come out exactly right. Here, the crack Russian squad at the Crystal Palace get their check mark drill wrong. They are ahead, coming in hard on the bend in the outside lane. But already, the incoming runner is too close to the outgoing runner. And this is where most errors in relay running occur. The gap is closing fast between the runners. The incoming runner has to decelerate. The outgoing runner is nowhere near maximum speed. Free distance is rapidly lost. And when they're running alongside one another, there's always the danger of knocking and dropping the baton. Here, they're lucky, and they survive with the baton. And with sheer sprinting speed, they not only survive, but go on to win. The change used for the 4x400 meters relay is quite different. It too requires practice, but it is a visual change. The outgoing runner watches the man bringing the baton to him. It's the outgoing runner who must assume most of the responsibility for the timing of the change. He must carefully gauge his speed as he runs away from the inevitably tired incoming man who has just raced a full lap. Again, either the upsweep change or the downsweep can be used. But there must be a national consistency in this choice, as in all relay racing, if the sprinters are to be interchangeable between various relay squads. In the 4x400 meters, the first lap is run in lanes, and the runners stay in their lanes until the first bend of the second lap. And so there is no lane discipline problem in the first exchange. It is a visual exchange, and the incoming runner has no difficulty in finding his man. The outgoing runner needs only to judge his pace so that he is moving fast when the exchange takes place, but not so fast that his tiring teammate cannot get the baton to him safely. Now in the second lap, when the runners break lanes, is when most trouble occurs. There can be great confusion with squads competing for the pole position. Look at the barging and pushing. Great Britain gets away this time, but someone was left sprawling. Let's look from another angle. Glenn Cohen for Britain, in the inside lane, and well clear of the mob, gives a clean handover to David Jenkins. But for the rest, it's a melee. It needs a cool head to get clear of a disaster like this. Sheer individual sprinting speed is essential, but the ultimate aim of relay running is to move the baton round the track as quickly as possible. And that means intensive training to learn to pass the baton safely and at speed. 